And I'm wondering, do you, do you think, you know, being a diabetic expert, uh, you think CoQ10 might have made a difference in, um, in delaying, you know, the, the possibility of insulin resistance or even, um, you know, frank diabetes as well? Well, it depends on the other um, risks and the other ha habits, lifestyle habits that could have overwhelmed that beneficial effect. If you were going to be obese and eat a lot of, you know, greasy food, fried food, you know, high glycemic carbohydrates. But in other words, if your diet was poor, as you, you can't negate the effect of obesity. And as right. people get heavier, fat cells spew out lipokines and cytokines and they make you insulin resistant and they destroy your, um, your aromatase, they produce extra estrogen, produce your hormones, throw off your hormones. And they, in other words, what I'm saying is that when your weight is relatively stable and you have a few extra pounds to lose, maybe that could play a role, but it, but it couldn't overwhelm the overall negative effects of over, being overweight. So I've, I've did a, um, a lot of people with macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy that reversed it completely. Even the Shea Eye Institute at University of Pennsylvania had a lot of my patients who had to cancel their surgeries and, and was shocked. They even submitted a grant of a 10, I think it was a, a $1.5 million grant to the national, to the NIH to get, um, to do a study on the nutritarian approach. But we were using to reverse the diabetic retinopathy in the, in the macular degeneration, which actually reversed, not just prevented it. They had, these people were diabetic and they had it. Their diabetes went away and their diabetic retinopathy and their macular degeneration went away at the same time. And of course, we're, you know, a nutritarian diet uses moderate caloric restriction in the context of micronutrient excellence, eating a lot of vegetable, you know, greens and beans and onions and mushrooms. And then they're, of course, we're giving them, if they have um, macular degeneration, we're giving them some juices of um, half, one third, one third, one third, one third of a green like lettuce, celery, cucumber, one third um, carrot, beet, and one third cruciferous, mostly bok choy. So we're trying to flood them because with the amount of the carotenoids that are great for the um, back of the eye in the juices could be, um, you know, 20 times as much as those rad supplements ophthalmologists give their patients, you know, with the carotenoids and you absorb right. them better. They work more effectively when you're getting them from food and juices in the natural state than just taking one or two in a supplement because you get hundreds of them that work synergistically when you take the, in the, in the whole um, dietary program. So I've had a, a tremendous success in not just preventing diabetes, reversing diabetes and reversing the eye damage from diabetes, you know, so. That's incredible. I mean, that's, I mean, Drew, I mean, our listeners can take that one to the bank. I mean, our eyes are precious and to reverse a retinopathy situation, you know, right. with juicing and, and specifically in bok choy, I'm kind of interested. What, what's the ingredient in bok choy that uh, makes a difference? It's the ITCs, the isothiocyanates, right, mm -hmm. that, that have the effect to activate the NRF2 transcription protein. Right. And you know that when you get these diseases, it's a buildup of reactive oxygen species and, and, and advanced glycation end products. Yeah. So it's the AGEs that build up in, in an inflammatory environment. So you're combining the nutrients, you know, obviously with a loss of body weight. And what I'm saying here is quite... Um, radical to degree. I'm saying that even when a person has like black band or gastric bypass, you can measure their inflammatory markers, their insulin resistance, their diabetic parameters, their aroma, you can measure that, you know, and these things go start to get better before they lose all their weight, as long as they're dropping at least a kilogram a week. A kilogram. So this is what we've said the same. We see the same thing, whether we're measuring inflammatory markers or um, or insulin levels or whatever, whatever we're measuring the abnormalities, the myoperoxidase or oxidized LDL. We're seeing that people sure get better when they've reached an ideal weight with a body fat below 15 percent for a male and below 25 percent for a female to optimize. But we see tremendous improvement, even resolution before they lose all their weight as long as they're dropping the weight at least a kilogram a week. If they lose weight and then stable it and over and they're still overweight, you start to see the inflammation starts to go up again. But if they're continuing to lose weight and heading towards that ideal weight, as long as they keep on the program, we see dramatic improvement in the metabolic markers before they've lost all their weight even. You follow me? Right. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and you know, losing that kilogram a week is... I mean, that's that's really healthy weight loss. There's, there's no doubt about it. That's nice, slow weight loss, which I which I, I really endorse as well.